Boo, happy Halloween. <laughs> Did I scare you? <laughs> Hi, it's Lee McCain. Hi, it's Beth McCain here. And we're doing the uh, Law of Attraction radio show as we have done 72 times before. We sure have. This is show number 72. It is, isn't it? On Halloween. Happy <laughs> Halloween, everybody. That's right. Are you going to have a scary weekend, Beth? Not really. You're all dressed in orange and black. I know. That's not intentional. It just happened. But You're my yeah. cute pumpkin. Is that it? Yep. Well, you know, we're going to have a good time with little Miss Peanut. And yeah. We're going to, her and I are going to be walking around tonight having a good old time. Trick or treat? We sure are. I will be the official candy inspector. I see. And you see, I will pull out all the candies that are bad for Peanut. Okay. Like the, um... Hershey's with almonds, bad. Oh, I see. Okay. And the Nestle Crunches, bad. Ah, gotcha. And the little Snicker bars, bad. Got it. I'll pull I those see. away. Because, you know, you have to protect your child. That's right. There you go. From all that trick-or-treating, <laughs> you know. That's right. Man, yeah. my dad used to do that, too. He, he what a to, great dad. He used to eat all the Mary Janes. Yeah, he did. Yeah. How did you know that? Did he tell you that? Because I just know. Um, he, he was complaining the other day. He had one, and he was saying how they always make you spit. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they make you drool. Mary Maybe. Jane's make you drool. You know, we've got this ongoing cat saga. It's oh, just, gosh. You okay. guys, you can't even believe. Continue with the cats. Well, you know, everybody we have, everybody knows that now there's Millie, mm -hmm. which is actually a guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's Millie, Millie with turned a, out to be a Milton. Yeah, it's a Millie with a Y, I Millie guess. with a Y, for sure. And, yeah. of course, we have our other cat, Donkey, in the house. And all of a sudden, I, I mean, out of nowhere... The other morning, I was going to let Donkey in. I thought it was Donkey at the door. You know, and I looked down, and thank goodness I did, another cat. And this one is huge. He is the biggest cat Looks I've, like a mountain actually, lion. I've ever seen. It wasn't, though. <laughs> and he's, Colored like one, though. He has this deep meow. Okay, if anybody's seen SpongeBob, okay, have you ever seen the one where SpongeBob... Um, gets another snail because Gary or because his snail has gone to live with Patrick mm -hmm. and the cat's name is Gary and he goes meow that kind of okay that's exactly how this cat meows and he's scratching on the door he wants in the house I've never seen this such, is a very demanding cat I've never seen anything like it you know it's and, Halloween you know cats and all that well I, mean, that's I guess it. and so anyway you know everybody looking at me going oh he's hungry oh and my dad, apparently, we didn't know, has been in the backyard feeding him biscuits. <laughs> so we all looked at him and said, you know what, that's your cat. <laughs> so anyway. Well, now he's officially uh, uh, been elevated up to cat food. Yeah, he is getting cat food. Peanut's he's, been taking a little skillet of cat gonna food be out in, to him and every day. We're going to have to go take a look in the barn. Yeah, that'll see, be the outdoor cat. To see if um, we are dealing with something much bigger than we know. <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness for cat people. Well, and also thank goodness they're all friendly and they, they all, yeah. all want to oh, love you. I in. have never seen such loving cats yeah, in my entire life. That's something. You know. So the new place came complete with cats. It did. And we didn't even know it. They were all hiding. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> Well, hey, we have something new that we're about to uh, launch on the website. Um, a lot of you, you know, you write very, very detailed, extremely detailed questions. Uh, so detailed that, that they, they require a level of, oh, a level of... Deeper insight. Insight on our part that, you know, is more than just a casual, you know, what does this mean in the LOA or something like that. Well, one talent that Beth has, many of you know, um, is, you know, how she's able to be in touch with her core being. Um, she's also what is known as a prescient. And a prescient, it's not, it's like, it's, like, it's kind of a clairvoyancy, but it's not, it's not like psychic or that kind of a road. P perhaps, maybe you can explain it a little bit better, Beth. Uh, but, but we are going to be offering, uh, or Beth is actually going to be offering her services as a prescient for people who have very detailed life questions that involve, you know, future moves, future things that need to happen in order to, you know, come to a good conclusion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's a very, very, um, it, it's a gift that is, that is very, very taxing. But she is going to offer herself for that, especially in light of the way things are, you know, in the general economy and the way things are 
uh, you know, just just in the world in general. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that she will do very often. She might do, you know, five or six of them, um, them a month, but it will be available on our website. You might want to check it out. Um, it's pricey, but it's because of what it takes out of her. And, and it generally takes her a full day to do these. So if you want more information about uh, her abilities as a prescient and what that can mean to you, go to the website, www.bethelemccain.com, and you'll find out information there. And Beth, do you want to you know, add a little, little bit to this? Well, you know, as most people know on the website and everything else, it's something that I've always kept very private and realized that as I get farther along on my own path, that it's part of what I'm supposed to be sharing and helping with. And so, you know, we've just noticed recently an influx of questions that are much deeper than just the law of attraction, and they come straight to Beth at BethandLeeMcCain.com. Right, right. And it's been happening more and more and more and more, and it's not that I don't enjoy answering. I love it. I absolutely, I would do it 24-7. It just takes so much it's out just, of It you. does take a little time to to go where I need to go in order to find what it is that I want, you know, for this person. And so anyway, we've just decided that we're going to open it up to people who really need some answers that just they can't seem to find, you know, and um, we all know the law of attraction can provide a lot and, and, um, but life isn't just about the law of attraction. There's yeah. a lot more laws and, and there's so much to the universe and to our inner core being that it all works together. Yeah. So anyway, there you go. All right. Well, let's get to some questions. Okay. And I have one here from Shirley in Arkansas, mm -hmm. and she writes, How can you say we are creators when God is the only creator? Boy, that's quite a deep question, isn't it? Well, we come from God, or as we call him, her, you know, <laughs> the universe. We are a spark off the divine, the original source. God is the creator, but the fact that we are sparks off of God, the universe, this means we too create. That just makes sense. You know, God is not a vengeful, selfish God that just put us here to be puppets. The universe knew what it was doing when it gave us free will and laws of the universe. We are creators because God created us in his image so that we could create and learn more about unconditional love. And that, that is it in a nutshell. That is so succinct, and it's wonderful to hear those words. It's true. You know, a lot of people um, think that their God is a God that's just... Up it, there what, waiting, to, waiting to punish at any turn. And, yeah, and yeah, when in not fact, it's just, you know, the, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I well, love you have this universe. Meat. I got one. Okay. Uh, this is from Hank in Kentucky. Hank in Kentucky. That's a good Kentucky name. It is. Hey there, Hank. I am losing my home. How can I turn this around with the law of attraction? Well, Hank, it's all about shifting your focus from losing your home to instead the life that you want. Now, it can be hard for the logical mind to accept that you can save your home. And this doesn't mean that you give up on it. But begin focusing and visualizing living in a wonderful home and at the same time, thank the universe for the home that you're in while you're in it. You want to be grateful. That is the main thing. You want to be grateful for what you have. At the same time, you visualize on something better. And if you do lose your home, know that you're really okay. The loss can change into the best thing for whatever it is that you want in your life. This is when you have to put trust in the universe. You have to keep your eyes on what you want in your life. When you hang on to something desperately and you don't want to lose it, you're putting out vibrations of desperation and mm -hmm. don't wants. Mm -hmm. And those will bounce straight back to you. But if you expect that you're going to be happy and fine and taken care of, that doesn't necessarily mean the house is going to be saved. Mm -hmm. But if you know that you're going to be happy and fine and taken care of, if this house isn't the one, then there will be something better delivered to you from the universe. You might not know what that is right now, mm -hmm. but just begin to focus on your wants not just on the idea of losing your home. Yeah, that's like a forming an attachment when you're losing your home. Right. You know, and you want to do your best to detach from that because you really are okay, no yeah. matter what. Well, folks, this show just went by in a jiffy. It did. We invite you to listen to the hour-long show. Go to the website to find out all about it at Radio LOA. And until then, we'll see you next week. All right, bye. Bye. Bye.